Hello children, I hope you are all safe and doing good. So, I welcome to a Samveda E class for class 6 general science and today we will be discussing about chapter 7 and this is the second session chapter is getting to know plants. Children we already discussed about the different concepts in the first sessions. So, now today we will discuss some of the important concepts in this session. So, today's objectives as the leaf, the kitchen of the plants, the parts of the leaves, the functions of leaves, root system and its functions, flower, reproductive organ of a plant. So, these are the objectives we will be discussing in this chapter. Let us recall whatever you have learned it in the session 1. So, identify the types of plant children. Keenly you have to observe and find out which are the different types of plants you are observing in this picture. Your guess is correct children. The first A picture says it is a herbs and the second B it is a shrubs and the third picture it is a tree. So, these are the different types of plants. It has been classified based on their size. Which type of plant are you observing in this picture children? Keenly you have to observe, just guess it which type of plant you are observing in this picture. Climbers or creepers. So, in the previous class we have been discussed in detail about the climbers and creepers. In this picture which type you are observing? Yes children your guess is correct. It is a climbers. So, what are climbers children? It takes a support of a object for the growth because of the weak stem. The next question, the identify the functions of stem. By seeing the picture only you can identify children. So, it is the movement of water from the roots to the other parts. It conducts the water and minerals from the roots to the other parts and particularly for the leaves for the preparation of food. Yes children. So, these are the previous class uh, revisions and now we will go with the present session. So, now tell me who is right? Observe children who is right. So, who do you think is watering their plant is correctly? Either girl or a boy. Can you guess children? Yes, it is a girl. Why the girl is correct? Because she is putting a water to the a particular part which is required, the water is required to the plant. But the boy is watering to the other part of the plant. Which part you have guessed it children? Yes, it is a root. The which part of the plant in the soil is? It is nothing but the root. It is a, as you all know, you have been studying the different types of system in the plant. So, one is called as a root system, another one is called as a shoot system. So, the plant that is particularly the root will be attached to the soil. So, what are roots children? The root is a non-green part of the plant and it normally remains underground and fixes the plants in the soil. So, the major function of the root is it fixes the plant in the soil and roots are present in the soil and it is called as below the ground. You can say it is a root is always below the ground. So, to know the importance of root. So, let us have an activity children. For this you need a selected two plants of the same kind. Same kind is if you are selecting a hibiscus plant, you have to select the two plants should be hibiscus or you can also select a different other plant like rose plant you can select or any other plant available plants in your home. And open the ground and dig them off from the roots. So, their roots should do not break. Plant one of them in a pot A and cut off the root from the other plant and plant it in a pot B. Water them regularly. So, pot A should have a roots and pot B should not have a root children. Observe the plant after week. So, what do you will observe? You got an idea children. So, which pot have a healthy plant? You can see that is pot a because it is having a roots. In the pot B because since there is no root what happens? The water and the minerals cannot be absorbed from the soil and it cannot be sent to the leaves and there is no preparation of a food. So, obviously what happens? The plant will die. So, this says about that root is very very important parts of the plant 
body. Now we will see the, the functions of root. So, already you know performing an activity that root plays an important role in the plants. We will see the major functions of roots. Functions of root if you take it fixes the plant in soil and it absorbs water and minerals from the soil for the growth of the entire plant. Soil contains the minerals that have been absorbed by the roots and it is sent to the parts of the plant and binds the soil together so that it does not get washed away during a rain or a blow away by the winds and you can say that it prevents a soil erosion. So, these are the major functions of root. Children identify the difference by seeing this picture you can recall that in the first chapter the germination of seeds. Do you remember children? Yes, this is the first picture says it is a maize and the second is a green gram. So, you can see the germinations based on the observation in the maize and the gram germination the plants roots are mainly of two types. So, can you see in the maize germination the roots how they are arise and in the green gram it is been arise. So, now based on the observation in the maize and the green gram germinations the we have a two types of roots that is called as a tap root system as well as fibrous root system. What is called as tap root system? The root that first emerged from a seed is called as radical or it is called as primary root. So, you have seen that germination from the seeds where the root are arises. So, that we call as a primary root. In tap root system the radical enlarges and form a, a prominent root we call as a tap root. From the seeds after the germination from if you sow that seeds, so the new plants will be arises that root which are arise from the seeds we call as a, a primary root. From a primary root a prominent root is being formed we call as a tap root and many branches many small small branches grows from the tap root which is called as a lateral roots. So, this is we have a primary roots that is and lateral roots in the tap root. What are the major functions of tap root system? Its function is to store food such as carbohydrates to reach up to a deep water in the ground and tap root usually controls the growth and development of the lateral roots children. An example for the tap roots radish, mango, carrot, beetroot and turnip plants have a tap root. So, mainly you have to remember it helps to store the carbohydrates. So, now we will go with the fibrous root. What are fibrous root children? Fibrous root system consists of an extensive mass of similar size roots. So, the you do not uh, differentiate between the lateral roots as well as primary roots as in the tap root. It is a clusters of roots which you are observing in the fibrous roots. So, in this system the radical is short light and is replaced by a mass of the roots and number of thin fiber like roots arise from the base of the stem and example for the fibrous root children grass, sweet potatoes, onion, sugar cane, wheat and a rice. So, this type of uh, plants will be having a fibrous roots. It is a clusters of or it is also called as a mass of roots which are been present in the fibrous root. So, we have been studied about the different types of roots that is fibrous root as well as tap root. As I told, so in the tap root, so we have a primary root as well as lateral root. So, if you see observe this, this we call as a a fibrous root. So, the clusters of roots where there is no uh, branches. So, this is called as a, a fibrous roots and this we call as a, a lateral roots. You can see it is called as a tap root system. So, where primary root is there and from the primary root you can see a branches number of branches which has arises we call as a lateral roots and these are the different types of roots. Now, we will see the modification of the roots. So, in some plants roots are modified to perform many other functions along with the three functions children. Modification of roots for the storage of food if you take the roots of the plants like carrot, beetroot, sweet potato stores food and does swollen and fleshy. And if you come to the other modification of root is the plants like bamboos, 
and banyan gives out a roots from their branches that grow downward and anchor in the soil such roots are called as a prop root and then mangrove plants that grows in marshy areas develop a breathing roots that come above the water surface and the plants like pea and beans have a small swellings on the roots called as root nodules and this nodules contains a rhizobium bacteria that can fix the atmospheric nitrogens please make a note children the root nodules which contains a bacteria that is called as a rhizobium which helps in the fixation of nitrogen in the atmosphere so these are the important modifications which takes place in the roots and you have been studied in the previous class the modification of stems isn't it right about the modification of stems like tubers tendrils and thorns even same thing which is applies to in the to the roots it is also applies to the roots that is the prop roots a uh, root nodules and also to store the foods now we'll go with the the leaf it's another part of the plant so it is also called as kitchen of the plant so by word it can think children why it is called as a kitchen of the plant because it is a place where the food is been prepared in your house which place the food is been prepared right so that is kitchen of the plant is the leaf so in the leaf the food is been prepared so what is the structure of leaf if you say it is a flat green part of the plant that arise from the nodes so remember children so in the, we have been studied the uh, parts of the stem the nodes and inter nodes where the leaves have been arise from the nodes and it's uh, having its own branches now let us look into the parts of the leaves first part of the leaves is called as a petiole it is a part that attach the leaf to the stem is it is called as stalk and lamina it is a broad flat green part of the leaves it is also called as a leaf blade so different parts of the leaves if you take so the stalk we call as petiole and the flat surface of the leaves we call as a lamina you can observe in the next part of the leaves you can see the mid ribs it is a main or central vein of the leaves from which numerous uh, side veins are being arises and the side veins these are the tiny veins that arise from either side of the mid ribs the vein stands for food and water and provides a support to the leaves so if you take up leaves children this is called as a petiole and this the flat surface is called as a leaf blade or lamina and the vein the line which passes from the petiole to this one is called as a it is called as, to the tip is called as a midrib and small veins which have been arise from the midrib so this are the parts of the leaves now we'll see the leaf venation so the leaf venation is the design or the pattern made by the veins in the leaves pattern or the design which are been made by the veins in the leaves are called as leaf venations so on based on the leaf venation we have a two types children so which is called as a reticulate venation and parallel venation so what do you mean by reticulate venations the veins form a net like pattern on both side of the mid rib as seen in the leaves of neem rose and pea plants the plant or the leaves have reticular venations have a tap root so remember children plants which have a tap root they have a reticulate venations you can see the picture and next is parallel venations the veins runs parallel to one another as seen in the grasses and also leaves of banana plants and the plants whose leaves have parallel venation have a fibrous roots children so if you observe this can you identify can you recognize which type of uh, venation is so yes this is a reticulate venation so where it is been run with the different veins are been run and if you come to this parallel venation you can see a parallelly the veins are been arranged this is called as a parallel venations so now we'll see the the functions of leaves the main functions of green leaves is to manufacture a food by the process called as photosynthesis so what do you mean by photosynthesis children so it is nothing but it's a process of 
preparing a food by a plant by using a chlorophyll sunlight water and minerals so that process is called as photosynthesis the word if you divide the photo means light so the chlorophyll which is present in the leaves traps the sunlight so why the leaves are in green in color children it is because a green pigment which is present in the leaves that is called as a chlorophyll which has a ability to trap the sunlight and if you see this using a carbon dioxide as you know that we gives out a carbon dioxide and we take a oxygen which has been given by the plants and using a carbon dioxide water and the energy of a sunlight it produce a food in the form of glucose starch you do you remember children yes it is in the form of starch and oxygen is also released in this process so you can see the carbon dioxide which has been given out by us pouring a water to the soil it absorbs and the stem will conducts the water to the leaves both they combine and using a sunlight and with chlorophyll pigment they produce as a carbohydrates that is the c6 h12o6 are in the form it is been stored in the form of starch and liberation of oxygen and this oxygen are been taken by us so this is a major function of a uh, leaves and that is why it is called as a kitchen of the plant and the next to know about how the whether the starch has been produced or not so we would require a leaf a spirit a beaker test tube burner water a plate and iodine solution for this activity to put a leaf in a test tube and pour a spirit to the completely over the leaf now put the test tube in a beaker or filled with a water heat the beaker till all the green color from the leaves comes out into the spirit in the test tube take out the leaves carefully and wash it in the water put it on the plate and pour some iodine solution over it so if you use iodine solution what color you can expect children yes it's a blue black color and that indicates the presence of starch for this experiment you should use a spirit and also the burner it has to be done in presence of teacher the second function of leaves if you take it helps in the exchange of gases or which part of the plant which helps in the exchange of gases children so there is a one part called as stomata and this is stomata so is called as a tiny pores which are present on the underneath of the you can see a picture called as a stomata and this stomata which helps in the exchange of gases in the plant you can see the picture of a stomata if you observe under microscope this stomata why we have been considered this exchange of gases is a function of leaves because this tiny pores which have been present in the leaves children the next function of leaves is transpiration so then what is the meaning of transpiration children it is nothing but the extra water present in the plant is released from the stomata in the form of water vapor and this process is called as a, a transpiration so this transpiration helps in a cooling of leaves and a poor transport of water from the roots to other parts of the plants how we'll say that you know the transpiration has been taken place for this you can conduct an experiment by yourself take a potted plant and water it cover a leafy branch of a plant with a polythene bag keep this potted plant in the sunlight for few hours observe a tiny drops of water on the inside the polythene bags which can be observed after one or two hours you can see children and you can see a tiny droplets which are been Uh, removed from the plant body and that process is called as a transpiration so this is a major function of leaves and next structure will be studying about that is a flower so we'll let us see what are the different parts of the flower as you know the flower is a reproductive part of the plant flowers different shapes size and color and where this flowers have been attached they are been attached to the stem of a plant by which the stalk called as pedicel and some flowers smell sweet to attract insect for pollination let us know about the parts of the flower it flowers generally has four parts remember children the flowers will be having a, a four parts the first part of the flower is called as sepals or it is also called as 
calyx what do you mean by sepals or the calyx small green leaf like structure at the base of flower that protects the flower in the bud stage they form the outermost hole of the flower the all the other parts of the flower is been made by with the sepals it has been it gives a protection to other parts of the flower you can see a green color green leaf like structure which is arise from the leaves the next part of the flower is a petals or it is also called as corolla so the petals constitute the second part of the flower they are brightly colored part of the flower that attracts the insect for pollination so this the petals different colors will be there and because to attract the insect for the pollination is the second part of the flower and the third part of the flower if you take it is called as a stamen or angiosperms it is a male part of the flower which forms a third part of the flower so the first one is sepals second one is petals and third one is stamen or it is also called as angiosperm so it is a third part and it is the stamens can vary in number each stamen consists of a thin long filament with a bilobed head called anther and the pollen grains are present in the anther lobes they contains the male sex cells so this you can remember the male reproductive part of the flower is a stamen you can see this picture and the filaments so it is having a filament a stalk like structure it's called as filament and in anther the pollen grains are be present and that is a, a male sex cells the anther and the filaments form a stamen and that is a third part of the flower the next one is the pistil or it is called as carpels it is also called as gynecium it is a innermost hole of the flower or it is a innermost part of the flower if you say and it is a female reproductive part of a flower it consists of a three parts a solen portion at the base is called as ovary the ovary extends upward and into a thin long tube like structure called as a style and the style end in a knob like structure called as stigma and the stigma receives the male gametes within the ovary lies ovaries that contains a female gametes after the fertilization the ovary develops into fruits and the ovule into the seeds so you can see the it is having a three parts children the first part is called as swollen part is called as ovary and there is a thin layer thin uh, filament like structure will be formed and that is called as a style and at the end of this one you will find a, a stigma a knob like structure we call as a, a stigma which have been formed and all this style stigma and ovary will call as a, a pistil or it is also called as a gynecium it is a female reproductive part of the plant so now we'll see the parts in detail you can see the parts of the flower so as i told flower are been arises from the uh, nodes and also you can see the way the flowers which are been arises or it at the stalk of the flowers where it has been attached in the green part of this one is called as a pedicel so you can see this the pedicel is a stalk of the flower and the green colored which has been i know protects the other parts of the flower we call as a, a calyx or it is sepals and then the petals the second part of the flower if you take uh, it is in a red color the colors of the petals is because to attract the insects for the pollination and the third part is called as a angiosperm or it is called as a stamen a filament you can see you can see the filaments and also the yellow color which you are observing it is anther so this anther consists of a pollen grains and this pollen grains is nothing but the a male sex if you see inside so the inside there's a innermost part of the flower if you take it's a female reproductive part and inside this the swollen you can dissect also the inner part of the flower we call as ovary and the filament and the lobe like structure you can see this is called as a stigma and this stigma which helps the way the pollen grains are been come and attached to this stigma so this is the different parts of the flower now we'll have an activity children take a different flowers and for example the rose flower if you take so the number and the color of the sepals so many and the number of petals so number of petals it may be 5 it may be a 6 depending upon the or which type of rose you have taken 
are the sepals joined are separate in the rose flower it is separate and are the petals are joined are separated so you don't find this you know it has been joined and the stamens it is a male reproductive part it is a free pistils the female part is present or not so you have to take a different flowers and you have to see the sepals petals and then pistils and stamen whether the stamens are attached whether the pistils are present or not so in this yeah the second example you can take hibiscus and the third example you can take jasmine so make a list of this and complete the table children this is a activity you have to do in this flowers also we have a different so unisexual flowers and bisexual flowers so what are unisexual flowers children is nothing but only the one reproductive part will be present either male reproductive part is present or female reproductive part is present example cucumber papaya and bisexual flowers where the two reproductive part like female reproductive part and the male reproductive part are present and that such flowers are called as a bisexual flowers so and also in this we have a different types of flowers a complete flowers and incomplete flowers so what do you mean by complete all the four parts of the flowers all the four parts which are those sepals petals indicium gynecium which are present such flowers are called as a complete flowers so if one part of the flowers is been absent and that is called as a incomplete flowers so these are the different flowers you can say bisexual unisexual complete flowers and incomplete flowers and i hope you have understood children let us summarize this session so as we have been discussed the roots are mainly of two types that is tap root system and fibrous root system how do you identify the tap root system and fibrous root system children so pluck your plant if there is a, a primary root with the branches of roots called as lateral roots you can identify it is a tap root and another uh, clusters or the mass of roots which you are finding so they are called as a fibrous root and this generally the fibrous roots have a which type of venation children it is a parallel venation and the tap root system will be having a reticulate venation and the main function of uh, roots if you take the root absorbs the water and minerals from the soil they also anchor the plant firmly in the soil and the leaf consists of petiole lamina side veins and main veins and the leaf venation is of two kinds the parallel venation and reticular venations a flower is a reproductive part of a plant a complete flower has four parts which are the four parts children sepals petals stamen and pistils the male part called as stamens and the female part is called as a pistils so this is what we have been discussed in this sessions simple project children you can do by yourself make herbarium sheets of parts of flower and submit to the teachers and collect the different types of leaves and identify the types of venation and plan a visit to a nursery with your parents look for the plant different leaf of venations find out the names of these plants make a diagram of this in your notebooks so very very simple projects which you can do it from your home so let us have a assignment take homework children so very simple homework i would like to give it is a uh, draw the picture and label the parts of flower so you have been you should know the parts of flowers and the, then the second question define the following the photo synthesis transpiration stomata midrib venation so define the following so you have to define i hope you have understood so by this we have been completed this chapter 7 thank you children myself sudha r i am working as assistant science teacher in vidya mandir public school north block amrutali bangalore